Welcome to Learning Arduino for Beginners, episode number 37, how to use photo interrupters with your Arduino board. Now these are also known as optical interrupters by some people, but uh, all it is, and I've got one off the board right here, is one side is an infrared LED and the other side is an infrared transistor. Here I've got the data sheet for this particular one. Okay, hopefully you can see everything there. As you can see, it's an LED right here on this side and then a photo transistor on this side, which means when light is allowed to pass between the gap, the transistor is wide open. If it's blocked and cut off, there is no current flow through the transistor. Now I'm using here, um, see here, it's an HY810H, and I like these because they got a nice wide gap, makes it a little easier to use, but there's others. There's one here that has a smaller gap, so you can see it almost, the whole thing almost fits inside the gap of this one. But uh, you can find these on eBay and Amazon, they're fairly inexpensive. But uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to hook it up here and use it. And there's two ways you can use this. You can do an analog read of the phototransistor, or you can do a digital read, which just means it's either off or on, high or low. And with the analog, what we're doing is we're setting a threshold. When the light gets cut off a certain amount to the transistor, it just activates for what application you're using. And i got an LED here. Once it gets cut off, as you can see, the LED turns on. Now we're going to be using the same schematic and setup for both. Um, when we get over to the computer to the sketches, I'll show you both. Most likely you're going to use the digital read, but there might be an application where you want to use the analog read. So I am including that. All right. Um, Let's see, um, for the schematic on how this is put together, you can go to the website and find it on there. I don't know why that was blank. Oh, the power must have got interrupted for a second there. You can find the schematic on the website. Just look um, in the description below. You'll find the link. But all you'll need is an Arduino board, uh, a breadboard, a uh, photo interrupter, LED, and three resistors and some jumper wires. Um, for the resistors, We've got a 330 ohm uh, current limiter for the, the LED here, and we're also using the same on the LED for the photo interrupter. And then when we set up the transistor on the photo interrupter, you run out of the output. You want to run a, uh, a high value resistor to ground. What this does is it stabilizes it if you don't have that just regular light will mess with it and it's not very stable um i'm using 100k i do believe it is that should work with most most um you might have to play around a little bit but for most photo interrupters you should be okay with the with 100k and for most photo interrupters you should also be okay with the 330 ohm resistor for the uh, infrared led side as well so, all right, well with that, why don't we go over to the computer, I'll fire that up, and uh, we'll take a look at the sketch. I think what we'll do is we'll take a look at the analog first, and uh, then we'll take a look at the digital, and they're both really short, easy sketches. And, uh, oh, before I forget, common applications for these, you'll find these in like printers and stuff, but uh, say... Well, say you had something where oh, you wanted to use a uh, Hall effect sensor, but you couldn't have anything magnetic in there. Instead of having a magnet, you know, to come in close proximity to activate something to the Hall effect sensor, you could just have, or when it passes between here, it activates it. You wouldn't have any magnets in there. And, um, you know, like, well, maybe you got a stepper motor and you're trying to control, control, um, like a camera slider or something, and you want it to stop 
once it hits a certain point. You use one of these to do that. So, all right. Well, I'm going to go ahead, flip the computer on, so I'll catch you over there in just a second. Okay, I've got the Arduino ID brought up here and the sketch loaded up for the analog read. Now, this is the whole sketch right here. As you can see, there's not a whole lot to it. All we're doing is we're just, first we're setting up an integer and we're just calling it val for value. Then uh, we're using pin 13 for the LED. And I forgot to mention, if you don't want to add that external LED, most of your Arduino boards will have an LED on pin 13. So that's why I chose that. So you can use the onboard LED or you can add an external. In the void setup, um, we're just doing a serial begin. You don't really need this. This is just kind of for testing because you could do um, a serial print, which I got right here, so you can see the value on your serial monitor while you're setting this up. And that's just to figure out where you'd like to set your threshold to activate whatever is going to happen. All right, next we're setting the pin mode as an output for the LED, of course. Now down in the, in the, the void loop, all we're doing is we're doing val equals analog read, and we're on A1, analog pin 1. And then we're printing it out. Now you can get rid of this, comment it out. You don't need it after once you you know figured out what value you want to use. And what I did is I just picked 500. So if the value is less than 500 in a reading, it writes the LED high. Else, you know, if there's nothing in there between the 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 infrared LED and a transistor, it's wide open and it just has the LED is at low. And then I'm just doing a delay so it's not reading every like millisecond. We're doing a 250 delay. So that's all there is to it. Um, all right, well, let's go over and take a quick look at the, the, uh, the digital. All right. So now this is pretty similar to the other one. Um, We've got an integer, that's LED, that's on pin 13. Once again, you can use the onboard LED. Yeah, I forgot I did a little changing to this um, before, I, before I started filming. Then again, you can get rid of the serial. You don't need it. That was just something I had on here for testing. Um, it, it's pretty much in the digital read. It's pointless. I'm sorry, I forgot to just get rid of it. So... We could just, oops, we can just comment that out. And uh, then we're setting the pin mode for the LED as an output. Um, actually, when I load this up to the website, I will make sure, I'll just delete that now so when I'm done filming, it's not in there. Sorry, I forgot to take that out. All we're doing here, though, down in the void loop, is we're just doing a digital read. And... If um, it's low, which means there's something between the, uh, the, the infrared LED and the infrared transistor, it's writing the LED high. And then I just got an else here. It writes it low, so it doesn't even take a reading. If the reading's high or it's not reading anything, it's just going to be low. I didn't see a point in having to do another digital read. It's just we just did an else statement, so... Yes, that's all there is to using photo interrupters or optical interrupters with your Arduino. Like I said, there's lots of applications you can use this. I've used some, used a couple of them. Um, one of them I used in my photo gate. If uh, you've seen that, it's an older video I did, and it's um, for doing water drop photography, collision water drop collision photography. I've also used these in a camera slider I built. Um, you could use them, you know, as a security system, you know, to set off an alarm if a window opens, although a Hall effect sensor works just as well for that. But then again, you have to have a magnet, and these you don't, so, I don't know, it just all depends. The application, what you're going to use it, um, they, they are somewhat similar in use as a Hall effect, but they work completely differently. So, all right. Well, I think this video has went on long enough. So I just uh, 
we'll just wrap it up. So if you found the information useful, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. And with that, I'll say uh, I hope you have a great day. And remember, have fun building.